the amount of sacrifice that is needed to look like stage ready is insurmountable. There's so much (laughs) sacrifice that has to be made. Welcome. I'm Diane Flores, a former overweight, unhealthy, single teen mom living on all forms of government assistance turned IFBB bodybuilding professional. And I'm also the creator of Venus Fitness Studio, which is an all women's personal training gym with a team of personal trainers transforming lives in our community of Modesto, California. I'm also the founder of the Goddess Body Elite competition team with athletes all around the world and a team of coaches helping women achieve greatness they never thought possible. But it wasn't all that long ago that I lacked the knowledge, the confidence, the budget, and the time to focus on changing my own health, my own body, and mindset. Fast forward past many failed attempts and lessons learned, I stepped on stage 16 times, earned the prestigious title of IFBB Pro, and in that process have created a formula for our clients that's changed lives and gives me more freedom and confidence in my own body than I ever thought possible one that only existed as a daydream. My team and I now teach others through training clients in the studio, online programs, competition coaching, and now this podcast that you're listening to. I created the Boss Bitch Radio podcast to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step strategies to help you make profound changes in your life. If you're an ambitious fitness junkie or one in the making who's looking to up-level your confidence, create a body, mindset, and a life that you love, you are in the right place, Boss Bitch Bestie. I freaking love you, and let's get started. All right, you guys, welcome to Boss Bitch Radio. We're here to deliver some goods today. I have my sexy little co-host here. Amanda Glitters. Amanda Glitters. And today we are going to dive into bodybuilding for dummies. (laughs) Yeah. So essentially this is going to be if you are like, what does it take to compete? I know we talk about this a lot, but we wanted to bring it back into an episode because we did, well, actually I did a solo episode on this and like summer of last year, it was one of the top three podcasts that's been downloaded. So I thought let's redo it with her and I together Yeah, and, uh, put a little spin on it. But it's, if you are curious about what it takes to look like a competitor or someone in their competitive journey, this will also be useful for you. We do get a lot of requests and people on socials who want to know like what it takes to do that without actually doing it. Right. Oh, yeah. Like the competing. Oh, yeah. I get that all the time. Everybody's goals is to look leaner, look like a competitor, not compete, but still look like one. And I'm like, yes, that's a perfect. Okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about what it's going to take for you to be able to do that. And why it's so difficult to do that when you are not actually going to get on stage. Exactly. So in today's episode, we are going to split it up into two very important pieces, pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. It's the, the bedrock. Yeah. Okay. And within that, there are other layers. So we're going to split it up into the tactical components, like the things you got to do, the things you got to do. Yeah. Like there's the non-negotiables, yeah. right? The <laughs> actionable steps. And then we have the psychological component the more important which components. usually gets <laughs> left behind in someone's decision to do such a thing. Right. At least I see often happen. And we're going to try to help prevent that for you. So starting with tactical, there is going to be an understanding that you are going to be dieting in some way, shape, or form. Right. Right. So in reality, you're going to have to be dieting. You're going to need to know what your intake is, how many calories you're going to need. And the thing about this is, is everybody's like, well, just give me what she's eating and it'll work for me too. Do you know how (laughs) silly that is? (laughs) I can't tell you how many times that I was that person that thought that Yeah, and did that and had also like for years after I was like, okay, that's not how it works. People were still we're still doing that. And so I say that it's silly not to be an asshole, but kind of be an asshole. Amanda's five, one, <laughs> barely on a good day, five right? foot three like, quarter. I'm five, four. 
I'm 45, she's 37, like different metabolisms, different ages, different heights. We weigh the, almost the same thing usually all the time. All the time. Unless she's in prep. <laughs> Significant height difference, different body shapes. So her activity level is a little, little bit different than mine. <laughs> so you cannot just take somebody's meal plan and macros and think that that's going to work. Yeah. Right? It may for like a minute, but again – that's sometimes people don't give it enough time even for it to work. I think the next thing that we need to really like dive into is that if you're wanting to look like a bodybuilder or a competitor, you can't just jump to a 1200 calorie diet and hope that you're going to have a banging ass. No. Listen, you're going to lose that ass. It's going to go down and she's going to be sad. Sad, sad ass. Sad Sally. Sad Sally. Sag, soggy glutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we understand the desire to just want to cut to the chase, right? Yeah. Like give me the meal plan. That's going to give me all the results right away. I understand that. And that'll work to a certain degree, but to what she's saying, your body's going to not look like it would if you did it properly and took the right time and understood diet cycling and the importance of not being on a diet all year long. Hence why a lot of women struggle is because they go on a diet, an extreme diet, they sign up for a thing, and then they just stop cold turkey. Go back to what they were doing before. Go back to doing all the things and then freak out and then do another, you know, and it's this repetitive cycle. So there's a lot of back and forth that happens and why metabolism is a key component. Yeah, it's a and it's a key component in your success with your macros and your calories. So I feel like the first thing that you need to do if you want to do any kind of like changing of your body is figure out where your calories are at. If you don't know what you're eating, because I know you love this one. Mm. Well, I don't really eat that much. That's my, yeah. You know, if you want to see Listen, me like spin my I, head around like Medusa. I read something <laughs> the other day and I was like. I felt like I wanted to repost it, but it's a little aggressive. And it was like people that are starving starve because they're not eating enough. So how is there other bodies that say they're starving, but they're still overweight and they have an abundance amount of fat? Yeah. Unless there is some sort of like issue. Health issue. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. No, I totally agree. We see this often. Again, I have been guilty of this myself. I'm not usually when I'm talking shit, it's because I've also done these things and I want you to do better than I did. So, <laughs> yes, again, I've done everything. Yeah. I every mean, single thing we've, ever. We've all done that. But when you say you eat good or you eat clean or you eat whole foods or whatever, but yet you've never tracked it, you don't know how much, cal- you know, how many calories you really eat. You're not really sure how much protein you're eating if you're wanting to do bodybuilding and look like a sculpted toned like athletic look yeah this is a like 90% of the equation hence why we started here and why we will <laughs> like probably can consume an hour just talking about how if you are so unaware of your diet i mean down to let's let's give you some ideas of the kinds of shit that matter when you are trying to get lean like an anatomy chart oh my gosh well not even gum (laughs) mints sauces any kind of condiment oh yeah okay drinks are the biggest the worst one you're just pounding back coffee and zero calorie drinks yeah even zero calorie drinks make a difference in prep right there is a point where your energy drinks come out your pre-workout comes out your fake energy is gone Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and you're a little unhappy soul usually most of that time. But it's just to show you that when, it, you know, if you're curious, number one, and number two, if you beat yourself up because you wonder why you will never look like this or why you can't look like this or whatever, it's yeah. because the amount of sacrifice that is needed to look like stage ready is insurmountable. There's so much <laughs> sacrifice that has to be made. I know I'm speaking for myself. I know I'm speaking for a lot of my athletes that have done it. And that's why I think it's such, it was such an admirable thing for me to try to achieve because I wanted to be able to do something that like not most of the population can do. Right. Because it just, I don't know. We love a challenge. Yes. Because I think it's just, I think it's just my own personal like, you know, 
the people that shat on me when I was like, <laughs> you know, a pregnant mom. And I'm right. just like, fuck you. Like I can do all these hard things. I mean, you the know? same thing. I was 300 pounds. I'm sure nobody ever thought I was going to ever get on stage. Never. Let alone like do well. Right. <laughs> so for me, it was like an ode to my old self. But again, it's a lot of stuff that a lot of people don't think about. So the so diet is. Let's give them a little bit of a starter, Right. I'm going to tell you, first thing I want you to do, I don't even give a shit what you're eating. You could be going through Taco Bell 14 times a day, but I want you to track it and see where your calories are at. Okay. And then once you do that, you're going to find where your calories are daily. And this is the thing. If you're not tracking the cream in your coffee, if you're not tracking, you know, how much peanut butter you're eating or how much of these either healthy or unhealthy things, you're going to be extremely off. Okay. But there is a thing that you can do is you can go and there's like tons of calculators online that you can go and find out what your macros are. Mm -hmm. They'll do it for free. Right. Do I think they're going to be correct? Maybe, maybe not. It depends. But that's also another reason why you need to go the next step and track your food so you can know where you're at and know if this is going to put you in a deficit. How far are you going to be in a deficit? are you too far in a deficit and we need to start feeding you more so your body composition can change? Yes. I know it's like a lot of people have resistance to like hiring a coach or, you know, buying a program that maybe like helps them figure it out and they want to like piecemeal all this stuff together on Google, which trust me, I was a girl, I was broke at one time. So (laughs) I'd be done doing those things. But I think if you can look at the long-term benefits of what the investment of yourself, right? Like your body, your own human vehicle. (laughs) I feel like, like, would you rather pay a coach to get healthy or pay a doctor to make you not sick? (laughs) To make you not sick. Right. Because, or you just run around aimlessly naive to the fact that you're fucking up yourself. Right. (laughs) And then you just deal with it later, which is what most people do. (laughs) Am I, tell me I'm wrong. Show me the lie. I'm getting so fired up right now. Well, I knew this was going to happen. Well, because (laughs) side rant. Okay. I just got back from nine days in Europe. Okay. The, I, the islands off the coast of Portugal. I'm Azorian, if that helps. (laughs) And, I told you like the meals and the food and everything is incredibly rich and high fat and every meal came with a huge portion of rice, a huge portion of French fries and a popsicle, which is a bread or like (laughs) some kind of bread. Yeah. Okay. And then you have a, usually some kind of fatty cut of beef. It was very challenging for me to find chicken breast. Oh, I bet. Very hard. But (laughs) you know, love my people. Okay. But looking around every time we were gathered at one of the things that my parents would take me to, unhealthy people everywhere. Right. 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 We stood out like sore thumbs. And by (laughs) we, my daughter, myself, and my son, because we're in tank tops and like exposed and like we're not even like, I couldn't even imagine if we were like stage lean. And people (laughs) were just staring and they were very, very unhealthy. So, all that to say, it's like you got to get a handle on what you're consuming if you feel like you are overweight or over, you know, obese or whatever. And you're like, well, I eat pretty good or I only eat once a day or whatever. Mm. Then if you are and this has been an issue, then you definitely need to just go see a physician and yes. have your your hormones and your health checked out. But again, I think a lot of times it's just getting really real with yourself. And I feel like that is the most resistance to the my like – my fitness pal, when you are tracking your macros and things like that, you know, whatever app you use, you know, it doesn't matter. That's just the one that is very popular. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a lot of people, they're like, oh, I'll just track it later. And I'm like, no, you won't. That is the worst. If you are, no, you won't. If you are an athlete and you're doing that and you work with macros, shame on you. Like, don't even do that shit. (laughs) There was a time where I was doing that in my preps. Like, like my coach had given me some options between proteins. And so I was switching between chicken and fish and whatever. And right. like when, again, when you're trying to get that lean, every gram of fat matters. Right. So I would go in and I'd be like, Oh, you know, I would not put a single bite in my mouth. Like it became a habit in a row. Oh, yeah. 
until I busted out my phone and I plugged it in. Fucking neurotic. Yes, it is. But again, it's a sport and this is the game we play. <laughs> well, I mean, that's why I prefer a meal plan in yeah. prep and I eat fish and asparagus and rice cakes all day. Yeah, it's pretty gross. <laughs> it's gross. Yeah. But, you know, it it takes the variable away from anything else. I know it's not my food. Yes. I know it's not my food. That's yes. one thing that I'm all about. Okay. I think we've we've definitely beat this one down. I'm getting like I know. We have so many more to go, you guys. But I promise you that was probably the rantiest we'll get. Yeah. Know, maybe not. I don't know. Okay. Next tactical strategy bedrock foundation thing that you will not get out of is weight training. Yeah. Okay. If you want to build muscle, you need to do weight training. Right. Not hit every day, not running on the treadmill, not Boot any camp. of that. Yes. Right. There are certain instances where some of our clients, depending on multiple factors, will want to include some kind of other leisure exercise that they like. Right. Uh, like uh, some people like CrossFit. CrossFit. I'm, I'm usually pull out CrossFit very early if mm-hmm. you go into a prep, but you can go in and do the wads and stuff and all that, you know, like a boot camp or an Orange Theory. But there is a certain point in prep where all of that comes out, at least on my team, right? because my focus is one thing and that's to get you in that top call outs, right? That right. is where my brain goes. So my concern is one that you are not getting injured doing dumb shit over here while you're trying to get ready for a show. right? So we move you to a structured machine that has a more predictable outcome of your energy output, right? Not like, oh, I just did you're this. You're sounding so smart right now. It's so true. You're talking about what kind of cardio we're going to be doing. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a <all>, what? <laughs> yes. So I'm like, I need to know that like this is a predictable outcome if you're getting on this machine versus yeah. you just went and like did Zumba and we hope your heart rate monitor is correct, right? Correct. So that's a component. So you will have a bedrock of weight training. Now, this is not like I have some dumbbells at home. No. And I can just knock out a dumbbell workout. This is like you're getting under some squats, you're doing some dead, like you're doing big things. Yeah. I mean, so even like I have, I have some really cute chiquitas on my team and they're all over in the New York area, but, um, she, we love our East coast. I, babes. We do, but she was training at home and mind you looks beautiful. She's a carby Barbie, great body abs, all the things. But now She's been in the gym and her body has completely changed. The She is one of my girls that looks like a competitor, but she is not a competitor. Oh, yeah. I know who you were talking about. Love her. Love her. Yeah. So she's not at home doing dumbbells. No. I and mean, her body has completely changed. We've, I don't even know how long we've been together, but it's definitely been over a year. So, yeah. Um, yeah. She looks great. We're building muscle on her and yeah, she's one of the ones. So yes. training, when you're training, right? You want to be able to have like a heavy day and then you want to have like a not so heavy day. You want to be able to recover from whatever body part that is by the time you go to hit it again. Yes. Right. So that's frequency of how much you should be hitting whatever body part that is. So everybody's going to want to train different, right? Because everybody's built different. So if you're smaller up on the top and you're bigger on the bottom, depending on how you want your body to look. You're probably going to do, you know, three lower body days and two upper body days. If you've got a big upper body and a big lower body, but you want a big lower body, because listen, I'm a wellness girl, you guys. All I want is a big fat ass and big, fig, big thick thighs, okay? So I'm just your backup dancer. I'll never be me, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm just going to keep trying to be the main star over So here. I'm literally about, you know, training glutes and training quads. So Most women, when they come to me, they want a big booty. That's why I do glute camp in the studio. It's great. So if you are a wellness girl, but you are bigger up top and you are just trying to make sure that the lower body either catches up or stays where it's at, you might just be doing lower body every other day or, you know, four days of lower body, one day of upper body. It is going to depend on your body. Right. And that's why hiring a coach is important. And having a plan. Because you'll just do what you want to do. Like right. most humans are are wired to the path of least resistance. Okay. And so what's the it, easy way? If it's if you're left <laughs> to your own devices, what are you gonna do? 
right? Mm -hmm. You might be one of the few that has the innate discipline to knock that out. <laughs> Let's just talk about this for a second, right? When we go into the gym, mm. we're like, which one do we dislike the most? And we start there. And we start there. We have to. Every time. Right. Every time. And that's a good way to think about bodybuilding. You know, the one thing that you're not going to want the most is probably the thing that you need to do the most. Yes. Be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. So nobody likes to be hungry. You're like, oh, I find food's not a big deal until yeah. you're fucking hungry. And then you're like, mm, about that food. Yeah. Yeah. But can I have that back? Yeah. So Thanks. with training, you know, Amanda went in depth as far as Sorry. what that can look like. No, <laughs> it's it's great. But again, you're going to be in the gym. You're going to be doing big, heavy movements, movements that give you a big bang for your buck, right? You're not just in there doing calves and piecing out like you're doing some big muscle groups. And you have to do that consistently. So I've been saying this in the gym a little bit. I'm like, if you are not out of breath after your set, you're probably not going hard enough. Now, I'm not saying on like a warm up set, but definitely on your working sets, your heart rate should be up and you should be out of breath. Yes. If you're not, you're just going you're, with the you're flow. You're doing the things. You're going, you're just a fucking have a heart rate. You're not, you're just a pulse. Yeah. And you're just going to 12 because your coach said 10 to 12 but you probably could have did 10 more, but you're not going to say anything. Please don't be that person. <laughs> right. Right. Like we can't feel. So, and this goes, if you have a trainer and you are maybe like, oh, my trainer, I don't know. You know, they don't change my weights or they whatever. Don't push me. We don't Use know. Use your mouth. We can't feel your body. We cannot feel what's in your body. We can perceive exertion very well. And I right. feel like I've gotten really good with that, even with new clients pretty quickly off the bat. But Again, sometimes people are like fucking stone faced. Yeah. I mean, I'm making an ugly face by like a rep three <laughs> and some other people are like, I love it break. when the girls smile. Yes. I feel like Shelby does that. <laughs> I was going to say that. Yeah. We have a couple other girls too. I'm like, I don't know if you're growling at me or if you're happy. Yeah. So <laughs> if you are a, if you just start with a new trainer or you've been, a, you know, working with a trainer and you notice that this is a thing. Please say something like I, just be like, oh, I, you know, I could probably do 10 more reps. Would you like me to do 10 more reps at this weight? And they right. should tell you, no, <laughs> that's too light. Let's increase your weight and then go from there. So a really great way for you to think about that, whether you're with a trainer or you're by yourself, is think about the weights, the weight and the set and how many reps you got and be like, OK, on a scale of one to 10, one being hella easy and 10 being super hard, where am I at? Mm -hmm. If you get 15 reps and you're like, that was a seven. Yeah. Add more weight, bro. Yeah. Like, come on. Don't be just staying at a seven. You don't want to be a seven. You want to be a fucking 10. Yeah. I want to be a 10. Yes. I and on that dime. note, we're going to move into the next component, <laughs> which is cardio. We can talk about all of this stuff forever. I know. We've, it's already 25 minutes in. Sorry. 30 minutes in. That's okay. So cardio, again, we already kind of talked about that, but this is definitely going to be one of the tactical things that you can expect if you decide to embark on a journey of bodybuilding, competing, wanting to look like one. Yeah. Okay. We tend to stick to a few safe pieces of equipment for, again, the reasons I specified earlier. One, you have less risk for injury. Two, your calories are pretty low. And so we don't want a lowered- don't a lowered uh, output of your cardio if you just kind of are out left to your devices to choose what to do, right? We're trying to push you out of your comfort zone. And all in all, you are definitely going to be doing some cardio. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's pretty rare that you don't. Right. Very rare. I have rare. like, I've over doing this for however long. If you long are not doing, doing this, cardio, you are initially a lean person and, and you're trying good to build. Job. Yeah. And you're trying to build. Yeah. And good job for doing that. But again, you're, you're probably like building into the show or, Correct. you know, you're not doing anything crazy. Yeah. With cardio. So where you start, don't be, listen. Listen, Coach Glitter says, do not be that person that says, I'm going to start a diet and I'm going to start working out and then go to the gym six times a, a, a week. week doing cardio. Do not do that. No. You are going to look like a melted candle. Yes. And okay? you're going to burn out really fast. And you're not going to want to do it anymore. So take this. Heed this advice. How many times are you doing cardio right now? Just double it. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're not doing any, try two to three days. Yeah. That's it. Don't double it. Because if but, you're doing four, then listen, don't do that. If you are like, oh, I'm going to do my cardio instead of training. No, bitch. No. No. Training over cardio always. Yes. However, make room, make time for both. Yeah. Don't do your laundry and go to the gym. This is true. <laughs> we just went on a rant about how, which I feel like this should be a short clip for YouTube. But I don't know. It might not be that funny. But I realized last night as my clean laundry was okay. on my bed. Wait a minute. So people give us so much crap. Yes. For not doing our laundry. Correct. Okay. Listen, I could go a month and not do my laundry. That's how many clothes I have. Now, let's say why. Because that's not a priority for me. No. So, I am not going to be like, oh, I got to do my laundry so I can't go to the gym. I would, if, if I ever said that, please slap the shit out of me. I will punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was just telling her, you know, last night I got home from this trip and I have like, I literally just dumped the clean laundry and then time got away from me and I'm ready for bed and here are all my clothes. They're still there. I went to the gym. I did other things this morning and the laundry's still there. In a previous lifetime, <laughs> I would have been like, oh, sorry, I can't go. I just, I need to finish my laundry. It's, you know, da, da, da. it would have been like an excuse. To me, that is the adult version of the dog eat my homework. <laughs> right? I agree. That's what I agree. shit like that is. So what we're saying is, don't, Don't do your, your laundry, workouts. but go train, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but really, so like we said, training over cardio always, it is going to get your better bang for your buck. You're going to feel like cardio is going to be a better workout, but in reality, in the end of the day, when you're trying to shape your body, using your muscles and not burning them off is going to be better for you. Yes. So go train, okay? If you're not training right now, go train. Right. And then shoot us a comment. We want to know. Now, <laughs> the other thing is with the training and the cardio component, that generally doesn't change a whole lot. So when it comes to like the type of training, you have to be okay and get joy in the monotony of doing the same training yeah. and chasing the numbers and the reps and like improving your mind to muscle connection. That's why I love bodybuilding because it's not complicated. People just complicate it. Right. You know, it's so uncomplicated. And the it's same movements that I was doing 10, 12 years ago when I first started bodybuilding. We're still doing them. We did lap pull downs still today. Doing them. That's probably the first weighted exercise I ever did in high school. Oh okay? yeah, for sure. So it's you know, people get so wrapped up in like the program and change the program and like buy this person's program and like everyone has a magic recipe, right? Mm -mm. And I get it because you see your favorite influencers and they look fantastic and they have this crazy, amazing body. You don't know the story behind a lot of times. <laughs> you don't know if there's enhancements happening. So just also keep that in mind. But again, even if you're purchasing those and if they are true like bodybuilders, you're going to see a lot of the same movements. In these programs, if it's oh, yeah. a, if it's a good program, we literally do squats, we do lunges, we do hip thrusters, deadlifts, deadlifts. What I mean, kickbacks, every other step ups, and maybe? like a million different ways to do these things. Yes, like a million, right? Barbell, dumbbell, yeah, cable. The implements just <laughs> change. So, if you have a solid program, there's no use in changing it every other week. No. You know, we like to, especially when we're in like a phase where we're not in show prep and like when I have clients in the off season, I like the to them to run that for a little bit longer Yeah, in solid, you know, straight sets and just making sure that they're really working on their form and getting some heavy lifts, right. And working through that. But I mean, we'll run a program for six to eight weeks, sometimes longer. And some oh, yeah. of the things we do in the previous programs will never come out like a hip thrust. Right? Oh yeah. We, there's always like two days of hip thrusting. As long as it's open at the gym and we're not missing it, we're hip thrusting. Yes. Stay tuned for that post <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about one of the other kind of bottom of the list of priorities, but still very important, which is, uh, supplements. Yeah. 
So I know everybody thinks that supplements are the magic fucking thing. <laughs> But it's not. There's, there's nothing there. Is there my bicep? There's a bicep. This is my little bicep. Come on. Why am I so brown? Oh, I was just in Portugal. That's why. Yeah. Supplements are not, you don't, you're not just going to take a pill. I'm sorry. Even of those of you that are enhanced, Even, you're not going to yes. just sit on the couch with your Clen and your Anavar <laughs> and your Test and your Proviron or whatever the fuck you're taking and then just boop, look like in a, 12 weeks. No. You're like the, like the microwave just went off and you're ready to get on stage. <laughs> Doesn't fucking matter. It's my favorite sound. It's an aid. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just talking on the steroidal part of things, but yeah, um, absolutely. But even non PEDs, physique enhancing drugs, any of that stuff, it's just an addition to what you're already doing to kind of like, it's like the icing on the cake. Yeah. Right. It's not the cake that. itself. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, everything that we've talked about before this is part of the cake. Yes. That's like the wet ingredients. Correct. <laughs> now we've got the frosting. Yeah, and the right. frosting, okay? But we're we're doing them separately. So I kind of want a cake now. I know. If you are wanting to start supplements, okay? Say you are not taking any supplements. You want to know some safe things that are over the counter where we would start you at. Yes. Number one, if you are not taking a multivitamin, you should probably do that. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then number two, mm -hmm. you should take a fish oil. Yeah. Do I? Do you want me to tell them why? <laughs> yeah. I don't. I won't. Tangent. I mean, it's joints. I, and, I'll keep it know. to thirty seconds. Go. Okay. A multivitamin is going to cover any of the gaps in your nutrition that you aren't going to get with your obviously with your food. Super important, especially the way that our food is cultivated yeah. these days. And also when you get into a prep scenario, you are limited to a handful of usually the same foods and there's no exposure no. to any other foods, right? right? So you're not able to diversify your diet. Yeah. And we need that. So you're going to need minerals and micronutrients by way of a multivitamin. Wonderful. Okay. Fish oil is going to help with inflammation. You get real low fat and that starts to affect your cognitive ability a little bit. We move a little <laughs> bit slower. Yeah. So it's going to help with that and also um, just Joints. systemic inflammation and things of that nature. Yeah. I take it a lot and I – well, not – I don't take it a lot, but I take it for the reason of my joints mm -hmm. and, you know, side tangent because I'm on Accutane, it's – something that they've told me that it is good for me. So definitely another good supplement, especially if you cannot get your protein in is some sort of whey or plant-based protein. Yes. That is a really good thing. Now, listen, I have my people y'all listening. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Don't use this shit all day long. You are going to be hungry. Yeah. Okay. One, maybe, maybe, and I don't even want to, Two. Maybe two scoops a day. If you're like in a desperate pinch. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've, again, I agree a hundred percent with you too. Yes. Um, I have, I've had a few friends that were at like 200, 220 grams of protein. And I was like, protein you're never going to be able to shit. Ugh, that's awful. <laughs> yeah. Let's not do that. Uh, okay. And then we have some other things that are also helpful, which are like a good probiotic or digestive enzyme is always good because also, you're eating a lot of protein. Helps you poop. Helps you go to the bathroom. Yeah. And then some bonus ones, I would say we're actually going to start carrying this in the studio soon is basically like your starter kit, oh. <laughs> which for me, I wanted to narrow down to like four key like supplements okay. for new clients right. or women new to lifting and just women in, in lifting in general yeah. is a protein powder, right? L-glutamine for soreness, recovery, GI stuff too. Also helps with your gut. Yep. Um, creatine, creatine for muscle building. Monohydrate, which is by the way. And then lastly, MBCAAs or oh, EAA. Yeah during your training great. or your cardio. So that's a perfect like four things for you to just have as a base for your muscle building right. and fat loss, if you will, because you're going to build muscle and drop But listen, body fat. you still have to follow the diet and train. Exactly. Okay. This is a little helpful icing yeah. on the cake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to move to the cherry on top. And that is going to be the psychological components that you need to consider <sighs> if you want to go into a massive transformation such as a bodybuilding show or you want to simply be extreme and see if you can push yourself to the limit. I mean, let's be honest. 
the amount of things that you need to do and things that need to happen to be able to be that lean is very time consuming and it couldn't be very selfish. It is 100% selfish. I wanted you to say that because, yeah. Yeah, you didn't want to be the dick, but that's no. okay. I don't mind. But yes, it is very, very selfish. You are the the person. You are the thing. Yeah. Everything hinges on your – what you do. Yeah, for on your top, results or what on, you don't do. So all of this on top of your regular job, your family, your dog. <laughs> your household. Yeah. Your, the bills. Your, kid, your sister, you know, your friends. Yeah. Your partner. Yeah. All the things. Everything. So we probably – talk about this more than most people because we know what it takes from doing it so many times. And I like to prepare people because I would rather, you know, ahead of time and yeah. just prepare yourself for that rather than you be like, look at the end of your prep and be like, my whole life is on fire. Yeah. You know, we told you. Yeah. We've, we told you. <laughs> yes. So some key things you want to get right before you go into a, a kind of transformation like this is you have to be able to master your brain, your mindset, because yeah. your emotions are going to be fleeting, okay? They're going to be all over the place sometimes. Yeah. Some people are pretty even keeled, and that's great. And I feel like the more that you do it, the less neurotic you become about certain things because you expect them as they right. start to happen. You're like, okay, this might have happened before, but yes. Yeah. So when you can just – shift your mindset and the way that you think early on as to like the things that you're doing, the habits, all the little behaviors you're doing are leading you to yes, this goal, but also you're going to be learning a lot in the process that is going to set you up for life better. If you take that perspective right in the end, yes, there is a lot of shit and hardness. Okay. Difficulty challenges that come with competing, but what have we learned, right? Like, oh, we've a lot. learned so, so much about ourselves personally. And every prep, you learn new things. Yes. Because every prep is different. And even when you're going through the prep, I don't know if you've experienced this, but like you're going through the prep and you feel like just, you just feel like a piece of crap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I just feel like hey, shit. How many times I don't know why have I'm I told this. you <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But how many times have I scooped you up off the ground? But yeah. The best feeling. Yeah. The best feeling is the day that you get on stage. Oh, yeah. And you get to just go up there and you're like, even if it's a minute that you're up there and you're just like, I fucking gave it my all. I love every minute of it. Right. And I love every minute. It's of like, it. it's kind of like I used to think of this about like having kids. Like, oh, if I can have fucking kids, I can get, I can do anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I can do anything. But no, when you put yourself through competing, you have so much resilience for other dumb shit in your life. Tell me more. <laughs> you just do. <laughs> because you, you're you like, I ate rice off the floor. What do you expect to be harder than that in my oh, yeah. very privileged life? Oh, I would 100%. Okay. I eat rice cakes off the floor now and I'm not in prep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like you do some crazy, crazy shit. You know, yeah. you you pack remember, your food with you. Remember that you one time I put syrup on my fish. Your fish were pretend pancakes, <laughs> and that's fucking nasty. It's fine. So you have to know, you know, you have to kind of know the type of person you are, and that sometimes takes some work. And some people don't realize it until they start something like this, and then yeah. they realize, yeah, that's just not for me. Right, and I think. It has a lot to do with being like a planner, making sure that you're ready because a lot of stress can be saved if you get your habits in check. Mm -hmm. If your habits are not in check, like that's another reason why we like to take girls on as lifestyle clients before we take them on as, you know, competitors because we need to make sure that they can do these things before I'm like, okay, 24 weeks, we're going to get you on stage. And they're like, um, mm -hmm. And then it's like you've got weeks of trying to just get them dialed right. before things actually even start to happen. Yes. So navigating the challenges with the demands of prep mm -hmm. means that you have to understand yourself very well and you have to be able to 
handle your emotions. And, and it's if you, not easy. And no. And if you can't, then you need a support system, a therapist or something that you can like work with, which I do recommend you Shout do. Shout out almost Dr. Crystal. Right. I recommend <laughs> that you do anyways as just an average person, human being that's not competing. But if yeah. you are competing – because logic tends to just kind of go out the door a little bit when you're in prep at some point. So yeah. when you can handle your emotions, you're going to be able to handle the days that you're stressful and you want to have an, you know, a meltdown and eat the pantry. Yeah. But that's not something you can soothe with anymore. No. And that's totally like a behavior that you start to realize, right? Because when you're in prep, it's like the only thing that should be going in your mouth is what is on your meal plan. And if anything else is going in your mouth, then we're having an emotional reaction to something else. And it's up to you to change your behavior yes. to not do those things and not let emotions dictate the fast that you feel like you need to have a snack. Yes. And, you know, it sometimes it's difficult. Well, deep in prep, it's super difficult. But even for anybody that's in a lifestyle, you know, this is why when – um. <clears throat> You're like, well, I want to look like a competitor, but I don't want to be a competitor. It's why you're just like, oh, well, I'm not getting on stage anyways. I'm just going to have the snack. Yes. And that's why we say that it's so difficult because in prep, it's like you have to be right on. And the yeah. more that you can handle your emotions, your behaviors, the better you're going to have in prep. Now, I'm not saying if you can do all that, it's still going to be easy. No. <laughs> it's still going to be hard as fuck. The thing you have to remind yourself when you're about to make that decision, and let me tell you, this disrupted me from many of Snaxidents, is one coach said to me, and it would ring loud as hell into my head anytime I was going to make a bad choice with my food or my eating, is that I want you to think about being on stage and the girl next to you is not doing the fuck ups that you're doing. Right. And I was like, ain't no bitch still on my trophy. <laughs> and, you know, it, it wouldn't always work or sometimes I wouldn't have that like come to top of mind to just like kick me out of this like trance that you get in when you right. get emotional. But you have to think about that. Like if you're fucking up and all these little bites, licks and tastes are entering your mouth and you're in a prep, there's going to be in a girl, there's going to be a girl on stage next to you that didn't do all that shit. And you can't be mad when she beats you. Yeah, because you're going to be able to tell. Yes, you will wear it on your body. <laughs> I see it time and time again. Yeah. So when you can – grasping this, so like tactical tips for handling your emotions that for me would personally lead to a, some kind of off-plan eating is – my favorite is journaling. My second one is calling my therapist because she happens to be one of <laughs> my besties. Right. Um, but one of the tools that she gave me was I want you to just picture a stop sign like right in your face, like stop, 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 like psh, psh, it's just coming at you. Yeah. Um, that would help. And then honestly, soothing in other ways, you know, like did I say journaling already? Yeah. Yeah. But like getting out, sometimes I'll go take a bath, go take a shower oh, and yeah. just like process that and not let it like fester in here. So usually talking to somebody or writing it out helps with starting to regulate my emotions when it's like prep time yeah. and I want to quit. I, and it could even not be the food. I mean, there's been times when we've been at the gym and started crying mid set. Yeah. yeah. I, I did that the other day for some reason. <laughs> oh, yeah. You did tell me that. You're not even a prep. I think it was nope. your period. It's fine. It was. It's fine. I got one of those now. It's good. Yeah. See, Which is always try. great. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know if I have anything that kind of does that for me. What I do when I'm in prep is like – You just turn, a, it, you just turn into a robot. Well, I literally go from 3 a.m. till 10 p.m. typically in prep. Yeah. So there's that also. But what I like to do is I would make like a nighttime ritual, right? Like I know I need to be done with my food before I get in the shower or, you know, vice versa, depending. You know, I like to be clean when I eat most of the time. I know. I'm the same So way. it's like take a shower, eat your food. I would probably have tea or whatever and then make sure that I get my the fuck out of the kitchen and go to bed. Close the door and do not come back out. As soon as I get in the bed, especially when it's like time and we're there, mm -hmm. um, I'm literally like, can you go get that for me, husband? I can't get out of the bed because I'm going to go into the kitchen 
and I feel like a chipmunk right now. Yes. So, so the hardest part, one of the hardest parts, in my opinion, and probably many others, is the diet piece, which we spent a lot of time talking yes, about in yes. the first segment with the tactical things. But the mindset component that is tied to that is very, very important because it will break you from pursuing and achieving that goal. Yeah. So, and on the topic of goals, it's super important for the mindset piece of it that you know where you're going and what it is you're doing yeah. because you need to remind yourself of that every single day. And if you don't have a why, you're not going to keep going and or you're so, going to continue to spin your wheels. Yes. And that can be so confusing for people. At least maybe it was for me when I first started, I'm like, what's my why? And I'd be like, I don't know what the fuck's my why? Well, Everyone's going to have a different why and your why can't be, I just want to have a six pack because that's not going to stop you from doing dumb shit and eating when you want to like have an off track moment. Right. Just because you want six pack. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. It's not enough. I'll tell you right now, like if you're goal setting, what I would do if I was you, if I was me, mm -hmm. I would make like a three month goal, but then also set miniature goals in between so you could celebrate the things that you do do right and the things that you do hit like that's why honestly the check-ins are great because if coach tells me to do four days of cardio and I check every four days all four days I'm like fuck yeah I did that yes and then those are my mini goals each week if you're not looking at check-ins and like your schedule and trying to get you know all of these things done and celebrating that when you do achieve all of that there's no reason for you to keep going because you're just gonna be like, I still have to do more. I still have so much more time to go. I still have two months until I make to my big goal. And you need to find the small goals in between to be able to get to that bigger goal because most people aren't going to be able to get to their goals in three months. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You can make some progress. Absolutely. On my Q and A box this morning, uh, before we sat down to podcast, one of the questions was what's realistic for someone in seven weeks. Right. I mean, there's so many ways that I can answer that, you know, but there's, uh, that is going to come by way of so many questions that I have, like yeah. how strict are you willing to be? You know, how much time are you willing to dedicate th to that for seven weeks? Right. Like if you're asking me the healthy way in seven weeks, probably about a pound a week. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. you might lose a bunch in the beginning because we cleaned up your diet and that's going to be water. Great. And then it's going to slow down. Yeah. Don't expect that every week. No. So seven, maybe 10 pounds. If you're like, if you're probably over 200 pounds, you could probably do that a little bit easier. Yeah. But to Amanda's point, three months is a drop in the bucket. And I think you said it really well on a previous podcast about how it didn't take you just that long to get unhappy with where you're at. Don't expect no. it to be that long for you to undo the damage. No, not you know, at all. We can start chipping away, but Rome wasn't built in a day, bitches. And if you want the ass of a Roman, you better start building. You got to build it. <laughs> <laughs> We're dicks because we've done it. Yeah. And I love you. And I just want to tell you the real truth. Okay. <laughs> Nothing but the truth. So help me God. So, I mean, that also goes to the point of that you need to enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy the journey. You know, like we said, celebrate your wins. But other than that, you know, it, you have to really get excited about the little things, which sounds silly in like, the moment, but as you go along, all the little wins are the things that are going to get you to keep going. Yes. So that, my friends, was bodybuilding for dummies. I love that. And hopefully there were some nuggets in there that you could take away and start thinking about. Yeah. I don't feel like we missed anything. And if you guys have any questions, you know, you can always hit us in the DMs on the Instagram. -y. Yes, of course. And again, this is just you know, our cheeky spin on it too, a little bit, and obviously our professional opinions. But these are just, like I said, the two main pillars are you have to consider your mindset and then all the little tactical things. There's probably some other tactical things we could have thrown in there oh, yeah. too, but just for the sake of lack of overwhelm, you know, we could have went into like the body care component Short and, and sweet, y'all. you know, the actual stage and the posing and all that stuff. Right. But just as far as the building the body, yeah. <laughs> Building the body is the most important part. 
And that's going to come by way of the tactical things and the mindset and a happy little relationship yeah. working together to get you to stage. So, all right, you guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. You know where to find us over on the gram. If you're on the YouTubes, thanks for listening. Leave a comment. This, thanks for watching. This is also on YouTube. Leave a comment. Like us. We go look cute subscribe. today. So go subscribe. It's under my name, Diane Flores underscore IFBB underscore pro, I believe. But it's there. Find it. Yeah. We'll link it up. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Boss bitch. Wait, wait, wait. Before you go, boss bitches, real quick. I know we've just reached the end of another awesome episode of Boss Bitch Radio, and I'm hoping that you're having a blast listening to us and learning with us. But guess what? The fun does not have to stop there. If you are hungry for more things boss bitchery, fitness goodness, all the mindset stuff, all of the things that keep you motivated, you need to sign up for my newsletter. I know, I can't believe we've gone over 150 episodes and I have not mentioned once for y'all to be signing up for my newsletter because I've had a newsletter for 16 years. <laughs> Every week I send out some content. Usually it's a wrap up of some of the uh, podcast episodes with some snippets in there that's bite sized that you can carry with you in your, in your little pocket. But you wouldn't know unless you joined all the cool bitches be on my newsletter list, you know, and then you can just reply and we can chat. Those all go back to me, you know, like it is me. I do write the things. So I would love to continue to motivate you outside of this podcast. I would love to pop into your inbox occasionally. No worries. I'm not going to spam you. I don't eat spam. I'm not going to send spam but there will be some LOLs and some content that you won't want to miss. So join our boss bitch tribe. I'm going to link up the newsletter list sign up form in the show notes, which if you haven't taken a peek at the show notes, you should probably do that. There's some good ass links in there. There's some discounts, fun shit. Go find the email newsletter link, put your name on there. And every week I'll be whispering sweet nothings to you in your inbox. And it's a great way for us to stay connected outside of the podcast. All right. I'll see you in your inbox soon.